Hi, I'm Michelle Embleton and in this video I'm going to talk about what are the tests that can be used to measure your ovarian reserve. Your ovarian reserve is a measure of how many eggs you have left at that moment in your life. And this can be estimated in using certain tests such as an antral follicle count or a blood test to look at endocrine markers such as your hormone levels. In this video we're going to have a look at what is the antral follicle count test, what hormones are measured and what should their levels be. We'll have a look at something called the clomiphene citrate test and then talk a little bit about what assisted reproduction techniques are recommended if you do have a low ovarian reserve and the prices of the tests that we've talked about. We'll finish by looking at a couple of the most frequently asked questions and answer them for you. Follicles are the ovarian structures where the eggs develop and mature. Each month, a set of follicles begin to develop and undergo a process which ends with just one follicle reaching full mature maturation and releasing an egg in ovulation. The follicle that reaches this maturity is known as the dominant follicle. The ovarian follicles pass through different stages. To start with, they are a primordial follicle and begin the development process to become the primary follicle, the secondary follicle, and then the tertiary follicle. This is the antral follicle. After this, it becomes the pre-ovulatory follicle or the graft follicle, and then ovulation occurs. It's the antral follicle that we are going to talk about now, as this contains something called the antrum. And the antrum is like a fluid-filled sac within the follicle, which allows the specialist to visualize it in a transvaginal ultrasound. This is a non-invasive and painless ultrasound performed transvaginally, whereby the specialist will actually visualize your ovary on their monitor and count the antral follicles that they can see. In order for this test to be accurate, it should be carried out between days two and four of the menstrual cycles when the antral follicles should be visible. Day one of the menstrual cycle is counted as the first day of your menstrual period. If the specialist counts between five and 10 antral follicles in each ovary, the test is deemed to be normal. Less than this is a low ovarian reserve and more than this would indicate a high ovarian reserve. Well, a woman's menstrual cycle is governed by hormones. So by studying these hormones and what their levels should be, we can get a good idea of, of the overall picture of the ovarian reserve. The first of these hormones I want to talk about is anti-Mullerian hormone, AMH for short. AMH is produced by the granulosa cells of the developing follicles within the ovary. The greater the level of AMH, the more follicles are growing, so it is a really good indicator for your ovarian reserve. As your ovarian reserve declines with age, so do the number of developing follicles within your ovaries and hence the AMH levels decrease with age. One of the advantages of the AMH test is that it can be done at any point within the menstrual cycles, although it is usually done at the same time as the other tests, simply for convenience. Normal AMH levels are between 0.7 and 2.9 nanograms per milliliter, although on the lower side of this, 0.7 to 0.9, does suggest that your ovarian reserve is beginning to become depleted. Values of less than 0.6 nanograms per milliliter show a low ovarian reserve and values higher than 2.9 nanograms per milliliter show a good ovarian reserve. With high levels of AMH, you do need to be careful when performing ovarian stimulation so as to avoid any risks associated with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. It is also important to note that patients with polycystic ovary syndrome also can have elevated AMH levels. Follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, is another hormone that your specialist will want to take a look at. FSH levels increase as a woman ages due to the lessening amount of other hormones that inhibit the ovarian activity. When there is less inhibition of ovarian activity, follicle stimulating hormone levels can rise. The FSH test is usually done between days four and days five of your menstrual cycle, with day one being the date of the, of the monthly period. 
and it's often done in conjunction with the estradiol tests. In the units that are used to measure FSH levels, values of less than 10 show generally a good ovarian reserve and values over 20 indicate that the woman is nearing menopause. When looking at the estradiol levels at the beginning of the menstrual cycle, these are usually around 40 picograms per milliliter. Another hormone is inhibin B and this is also produced by the granulosa cells of the developing follicles. Inhibin B levels are inversely proportional to FSH levels since inhibin B actually inhibits follicle stimulating hormone. As a woman ages and she produces less and less inhibin B, FSH is then going to increase. So a low inhibin B and a higher FSH level suggest that the woman is nearing menopause. The combination of the levels of hormones seen from all these tests can help us to indicate whether we have a low ovarian reserve or not. Well, this type of test allows us to use a drug to see how it responds to ovarian stimulation. The clomiphene citrate is administered for five consecutive days, usually starting at day five of the menstrual cycle. The FSH levels are monitored before and after the clomiphene citrate is administered to see the effect it has had. An abnormal test result, such as a very high FSH level, would indicate a low ovarian reserve. However, these tests, this test is not widely used because it's more invasive because you need to take the medication and it could uh, taking any medication has possible adverse effects. Well, one of the biggest problems of female infertility is actually age, as fertility declines with increasing age. However, it is not just older women who may have a low ovarian reserve, and sometimes younger women can also have a lower ovarian reserve or one that is becoming depleted rapidly. So if you are a young woman and thinking of delaying motherhood, it's not a bad idea to get an idea of what your ovarian reserve is and what your options are for the future. If your ovarian reserve levels are low, you may want to have fertility preservation, whereby your eggs are vitrified so you can use them later in life and basically be your own egg donor for when you are older and ready to become a mother. Having a low ovarian reserve doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to have children and this is where assisted reproduction treatments come in. We need to know the ovarian reserve so we can decide on the best course of treatment for the individual patient. For example, if we perform an antral follicle count and we see the value is good, there may be a good response to the ovarian stimulation for an IVF cycle. The more eggs we get, the more chances that we can produce a viable embryo that will lead to a future pregnancy. However, it isn't just the quantity of the eggs is important, but also the quality. And as a woman's age increases, the quality of her eggs also decreases due to things such as accumulated chromosomal abnormalities or genetic damage. So for older women with a lower ovarian reserve, they may need to think about egg donation in order to become a mother with an IVF procedure. Well, as always, prices will vary depending on where you are in the world. For example, in the United States, treatment will depend on what state you're in and also from clinic to clinic. But you can expect to pay between about $250 to $500. The most simple test is the antral follicle count using a transvaginal ultrasound and this will often be carried out in conjunction with the hormonal analysis to measure different levels of hormones within your blood. A simple AMH test, one of the hormones, will probably cost between $80 and $120. Now we are going to have a look at a couple of the most frequently asked questions from our users and answer them for you. Well, technically, no. The more antral follicles you have developing, the more AMH you will be producing. So if you have a higher antral follicle count, your AMH levels will generally come back higher. However, 
it can happen that the levels don't come back as expected. And if this happens, it is the antral follicle count that your specialist will use as the guide to your ovarian reserve. Yes, having a low ovarian reserve doesn't mean you won't become a mother. Although getting pregnant naturally may become a really difficult task with a low ovarian reserve, this is where assisted reproduction techniques come in to help. IVF, in vitro fertilization, can help as drugs are taken to stimulate the ovaries to develop more than one egg to mature at the same time. However, if the ovarian reserve is very depleted or the eggs are of poor quality, it may be better to look at egg donation and IVF as the proper treatment. Although it is possible to perform an artificial insemination with a low ovarian reserve, it is not usually recommended as the treatment is not likely to be successful. It's better to look at IVF options to increase your chances of becoming pregnant. We want to hear about your experiences. So if you've had ovarian reserve tests or have had any interesting experiences, please do leave us a comment below. And if you found the video interesting and informative, don't forget to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And as always, I would like to remind you that in the description below, I leave you with a link to the article where you can read about this topic in more detail.